How's it going guys? My name's Sayana and welcome back to InnoGames TV. As you can see, I'm a deer this month for the December episode. But don't you fret, we'll keep you warm with the latest updates on all your games. So let's get right to the overview. We start everything off with Tribal Wars 2 new Android app. I know that'll make you guys happy. A new star is born with our newest game, Elvenar. We unveil the game and introduce you to key members of the team. Forge of Empires takes you through a winter wonderland, while Grappless isn't far behind with their very own winter event. And our game jam is back. We finish everything off with a new video from our most recent one. Without further ado, let's go with Gordon from Tribal Wars 2. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Gordon Kemper. I am the Junior Product Manager for Tribal Wars 2 and today we have an extremely exciting announcement for you guys. I would like to present to you the Android Tribal Wars 2 app. This will definitely enhance your gameplay. Uh, we here at InnoGames are extremely proud of what we could produce. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just uh, jump into the app and see what it has. So here we are on the Tribal Wars 2 Android app. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is that uh, your game account is connected uh, to your browser and your uh, app at the same time. So whatever changes I do here in the app, if I build buildings, recruit, or send messages, all these things are also shown on any device you play, which is really cool. We knew that it was going to be uh, very, very important for our players to uh, communicate on the go, and uh, therefore all functions that you also have on the browser would it be messages if you want to visit your tribe forum. All those things you can uh, basically type on the go, you can check them as well. All your messages arrive in real time, so that's really cool. Of course, other things function in real time as well. Right now, if I could go right into my uh, barracks, uh, for example. I could just build a few spearmen, a few axemen or so on. And um, all those building queues would also queue right up uh, in the browser as well uh, whenever I uh, queue them uh, basically in the Android app. Also some things that we attention to detail with were that um, we understand that uh, we can't use the exact same mechanics in the browser uh, in, the, uh, in maybe a phone or a tablet. So what we did is uh, we definitely improved the functionality. Uh, we have a lot of swipe mechanics. Uh, you can also uh, pinch your fingers to zoom in or out. Um, you can also drag and drop the, um, the map via touch. So um, yeah, everything feels very natural and, uh, and fluid. And of course, um, uh, you know, you can't have, uh, you can't have an app without uh, our awesome soundtrack. So uh, definitely all the sounds uh, that are also in the browser. Um, many of them are also in the app, so you can also enjoy the, the soundtrack and the battle music uh, while you're building up your city and yeah, while you're communicating with your friends. Especially if you're playing on the phone, you'll notice that uh, some men menus may be a little bit different. Uh, so for example, uh, the, the long bar at the bottom that we use for uh, big tablets. Um, that is just a small menu that kind of collapses from left to right in the bottom left on the phone. Uh, but we feel, um, yeah, we, uh, we feel this is very functional and uh, it still feels very natural for the gameplay experience. All right, guys, that's all we have for today. Uh, you can go to the Google Play Store and download this app right now. Uh, thanks so much for your support and feedback. Uh, we've been working really hard on this and we, we'd like to see what you guys think of, you know, our product. Um, and for all you people who are using iOS devices, don't worry, we have not forgot you uh, working on that too, and uh, that'll come in the near future. Thanks a lot for supporting us, and goodbye. Damn it, you humans. Oh, I'm sorry guys, I'm just super excited about our newest game, Elvenar. Timon and Oliver from the team will show you our newest game. Hey folks, my name is Timon, I'm one of the game designers of Elvenar, and this is Oliver. He's a UI artist. And today, we are going to take a first look at our new city builder. In Elvenar, you can either play the human race or the elven race. The races have completely different looks, but the gameplay is pretty similar, so don't be too afraid to pick your choice. At the beginning, buildings are constructed in no time, but they are also rather simple and basic. Over time, by unlocking new technologies, you can upgrade your buildings step by step to become more advanced and sophisticated. If you need a break from building your city, go onto the world map to visit other players, scout your environment and take a look into all kinds of mysterious provinces filled with friends and foes, challenges and rewards. Everything you do on the world map will help your town to develop, to grow and to become even more beautiful. Alright, thanks Timon. I think even I learned something about our game today. So I'm here to talk about the art design and we'll step right into it. As Timon mentioned, the world of Elvenar inhabits two different races. 
The elves are a very sophisticated folk. They live in harmony with nature rather than superseding it. On the other hand, we've got the humans. The human buildings have a strong European medieval fantasy look. They are defined by the craftsmanship relying on stone and metal. Let's take a look at the elven residence, for example, and see how some of the architectural differences show in the game. The most striking element of this building is the tree. A human architect might have cut it down, made plants out of it and used them to construct the building. The humans use a lot of processed materials for this building. Forged metal for the roof and the brick-built walls emphasize their architecture. Alright, thanks for watching and of course listening. And if you want more information, go to elvena.com and I guess we'll see each other soon. Okay, brace yourself because now comes the winter fun. Pear from Forge of Empires shows you their new winter event. Once upon a time, in your city of Forge of Empires, there was a strange visitor. He looks like a snowman and he goes by the name of Frosty. Frosty has a new task for you every day. You see your quest giver Frosty up here among the other quest givers. He is there with a new quest for you every day. He asks you to do all sorts of things to help him run a winter party. And if you do fulfill his quests, he will reward you with stars. And these stars you can take into here, into the winter event window. And when you click start, all your presents get shuffled. There you go. And now you start opening. Uh, opening a present costs 10 stars. And every present reveals a great reward for you. You can find um, coins, supplies, you can find buildings. And every day there is a special reward hidden among your presents. You can go on and open as many presents as you want and as many presents as you have stars for. However, there are a few special tiles hidden among your presents, like uh, the Show 2, which reveals the contents of two other presents. So it kind of allows you a sneak peek into the presents. Here you see uh, they get highlighted with a red ribbon on the side. Those are kind of like the ones where you can look inside and you can still decide if you want to open them or not or at what time you want to open them. Then there is the double payout. The double payout doubles what you get from the next reward you open. So if you get a building, you get two buildings. If you get a couple of coins, you get twice the amount. And if you get stars, yes, there's also stars in the presence, you get twice the amount. Last but not least, there is the uh, shuffle all button, which basically sets the whole um, presence back to the beginning of the day, right? So you can press the start button again, everything gets shuffled and hidden again, and you can uh, start opening your presents again. The winter event will be available for all of the winter time, starting at 1st of December until the beginning of next year. And uh, there is a new set of presents for you every day. There is a new daily quest for you. Um, if you don't manage to do a quest one day, don't worry. Um, they will stack up so you can do them the next days. And at the very end of the quest line, you have the chance to upgrade a confectionery if you have a confectionery in your city. Um, don't worry, you have plenty of occasions to win a confectionery among the presents. And in the end, if you have one, you can sell it and get an upgraded version for it, the large confectionery. And if you already played the winter event last year and you already have a large confectionery, then you can sell it this year and get the amazing huge confectionery. All right, fo ho ho fans, that's it for now. I wish you a happy winter time and many presents. Grepolis fans, you thought game designers would leave winter out? Nah, neither did I. Let's see what Marcel has to say about their new winter event. Hey there, I am Marcel, one of the game designers behind Grepolis. This time I would like to give you a brief overview of our upcoming winter event. Taiki, the goddess of fortune, will make an appearance again, just like last year. She will be rewarding every day you worship her during the festive season. In the context of the game, this means that there will be an advent calendar with 24 different surprises. Each day you will be able to open a Wheel of Fortune, which is tailored for that specific day. It will contain 6 different rewards and you will be eligible to spin the wheel for free, one time for the current day. By doing so, you will receive a random reward, which you can either use directly, store it in your inventory, or leave it in the wheel. You can claim the rewards you earned as long as the event is active. 
If you didn't get the reward you were hoping to get, you can spin the wheel again by spending some gold. And we have also included a new option this year, the possibility to refill a wheel. So, once you have obtained all the desired rewards, you can refill the wheel with some gold, which will also grant you another spin. In each wheel, there will also be one shard. In case you are lucky and collect five shards, you'll get all five advisors for one week for free. As a little surprise, we will introduce four new rituals with this event. Five rituals had already been introduced with the recent Halloween event. Curious to know what these rituals do? Then stay tuned to find out how they change some of the existing divine powers. One last note regarding the event. Every first spin of a wheel unlocks a new decoration on the scene until you have a beautifully decorated snowball. We hope that you all have a great and joyful winter holiday and also that you like our event. One final announcement. This is the last time that I will be presenting something to you, our Grappleist players, because I'll move on to a new, still secret game project. I've really enjoyed my time with all of you that make up the Grippolis community and I already know that I will be missing you. Goodbye and conquer some fellow players for me. We'll miss you, Marcel. But now on to Tribal Wars' new game page. Hey guys, I'm Tobias, Product Marketing Manager of Tribal Wars. And today I would like to tell you some details about an early Christmas present we have in store for you. This December, we will release our brand new homepage, which will have some nice features. First off, we set ourselves the goal to keep all information available you had on the old page, but visualizing them more appealing. The new page should definitely get you in the mood of conquering new villages while keeping you up to date about new developments within the game. But we didn't stop here. As many of you play Tribal Wars on the go, the page will adapt to the screen size of your phone or tablet, so you don't have to pinch and zoom anymore if you are looking for information. There are some additional features. For example, if you check the Remember Me box at the login field, next time you are visiting the page, you will see the World selection instead of the Registration field. Thereby, you are just one click away of entering the game. Of course, there's plenty more to discover, so just visit the page and have a look around. We are really looking forward to your feedback and see where we can make additional improvements. See you around! Last weekend, we invited around 140 game designers, graphic artists and developers to Germany's biggest game jam. So let's see how that went. Creating a video game from scratch in just 48 hours seems impossible, right? Well. At Germany's biggest game jam, 140 participants from all over the country took their chance. And, as Walt Disney already said, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. The theme for this game jam. I think it's a great idea to, to use a quote from a person like that for a topic of a game jam. After the participants formed teams containing developers, graphic artists, sound designers and game designers, they began brainstorming. Some teams took quite a while before they could start working on their game though. We were, I guess, brainstorming for about 10 hours. So yeah, we had quite a long concept phase. Then the first team started sketching, developed 3D graphics, or drew their game's characters. There are a lot of creative people out here, like artists, developers, sound designers, game designers, and you can really feel the creativity in the air. Some people even provided voiceovers for their game. Sisters, Jack, ready when you are. With sufficient pizza, snacks and beverages, the teams kept going on. Sometimes in the night it's getting pretty empty and you see a lot of very tired faces. But I think a lot of people have a lot of fun, try different things and we have a lot of fun in the team. Here and there, the first impressions of some games could already be seen. Sunday morning, some teams were already finished, while others tried to fix the last bugs in their games. 
Only 10 minutes were left for finishing touches. Others used that time to catch up on sleep or had a go at the pinball machine. Then, after 48 hours, time was over. Each of the 26 teams had a few minutes to present their games. Although there were many great results, Team F and Awesome earned the most laughs and awes for their fun multitasking game Hactopus. The judges Niklas and Christopher were also impressed as the developers used their own engine to code the game. Yeah! The next InnoGames Game Jam will be part of the Global Game Jam, which takes place from the 23rd until the 25th of January. Check the link below for more information. Well guys, that's it for this month's episode. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll make sure to bring you the latest news on all our games. And bundle up, stay warm, and see us next time. Bye!